Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate Andrew Hay's process macro uh, by focusing in on model number five. So before I get started I do want to mention that underneath the video description you're going to find a link to the SPSS data file that I'm working from in this presentation and you'll also find a link to a PowerPoint that's going to provide a number of additional details that you might find useful as you're learning how to use uh, the macro in this way. So let's go ahead and get started uh, just by considering what process model uh, 5 is actually doing. So the model as it's laid out uh, is essentially uh, allowing you to test for mediation and moderation in the same model. So as you're looking at this uh, diagram right here, what you'll notice is that we have our x variable, that's our independent variable, our y variable, our dependent variable, and a mediating variable right here which I'm denoting as m. And so, uh, essentially, uh, we can test the indirect effect of x on y through the mediator. And so, the effect of x on y through the mediator uh, is computed as a product of path coefficients for uh, path A and B. You'll also notice that we have a moderator that's included in the model, but in this case, the moderator is moderating only the direct effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. So, essentially, path C right here is being moderated. And what that basically means is that the relationship between a, the independent variable and the dependent variable uh, changes across levels of the moderator W. So the full model that we just saw essentially is um, is constructed from two regression analyses. So briefly uh, the first regression analysis which is for model 1 essentially has uh, the independent variable serving as a predictor of the mediating variable and that's where you end up getting the path A. So that's where you're computing path A. The second regression model entails regressing uh, the dependent variable Y onto the independent variable X, uh, the mediating variable M, the moderating variable W, and then also an interaction term that's created as a product of X and W. And so from that, you can see that we have uh, the uh, direct effect um, path C right here between X and Y. We have a direct effect between M and Y right here. That's our path B. And then there's also uh, this, the, uh, the relationship between the interaction term and Y is telling us how path C is changing across levels of the moderating variable. So for our demonstration, we are going to be using data from an article by Zhao et al. Uh, from 2016. This is on the relationship between anxiety and burnout among Chinese physicians and they tested a moderated mediation model. And I do want to mention that the analyses that I'm presenting right here is not from that original article uh, and also the uh, scoring of the variables is going to be different as well, uh, somewhat different as well. So do, don't try to derive any substantive meaning from the analyses in relation to that article. Uh, just consider this a walkthrough using their, their data. Okay, so here we have our data in SPSS and you can see then that in terms of the model, what we are specifying is that burnout serves as a predictor of negative coping and also anxiety. So you can see that path A reflects a direct effect of burnout on negative coping. Path uh, C prime right here is reflecting a direct effect of burnout on anxiety. And then the direct effect of negative coping on anxiety is this path B right here. And so the indirect effect in our model is going to be computed as a product of path A and B. And then you'll also notice that in this model, path C, the, uh, the direct effect of burnout on anxiety is being uh, treated as being moderated by this extraversion factor right here. So extraversion is being treated as our moderating variable within the model. So going back to our SPSS file, our uh, variables in our extraversion right here, negative coping, uh, burnout, and anxiety right here. So let's go ahead and run the analysis. We're going to go to Analyze, Regression. We'll go down to Process uh, 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 menu. Next, we'll move our, 
our uh, burnout variable to the x variable box, we'll move anxiety to the uh, y variable or dependent variable box. We're going to move negative coping to this box for mediators and then we're going to move extraversion down to this box for moderator w. For model number we're going to uh, set this as number five. And we're going to go ahead and leave our confidence interval and uh, confidence intervals at 95 percent and bootstrap sample set at 5000. So those are the defaults in the most recent version of process. Next we'll go under options and I'm going to click on uh, mean center for construction of products, I'm going to select only continuous variables that define the products. And we're also going to be generating code for visualizing interactions. We'll click on uh, conditioning values. I'm going to just use the standard uh, pick a point approach basically to generate simple slopes and to test them for statistical significance. And you have this option right here, it says probe interactions. Uh, if you have a p-value uh, somewhere in there that's less than 0 .10, uh, if you wanted it always, you can just click on that right there. But I'm going to just leave it as the default. It's not really going to matter in this particular uh, demonstration. So we'll click on Continue and then on OK. And it takes a few seconds because it's also doing the bootstrapping. There's 5,000 samples that um, were being generated. And now we have our output. So looking at uh, the output, you can see up here, the first thing that you get is so just some general information about the model. It says model 5, uh, the y variable is anxiety, the x variable is burnout, the, m, vari the uh, m variable or mediator is negative coping, the w variable, uh, which is our moderator, is extraversion. So the first model that you see uh, right here, you'll see it says outcome variable. So this is just that simple regression um, that uh, I showed you a, a few slides ago. So we have negative coping being regressed onto the burnout variable. So that's our mediator being regressed onto our independent variable. And you can see we have our regression slope right here. It's 0.3426 and uh, we see uh, that we have statistical significance. So burnout uh, was a positive and statistically significant predictor of the negative coping uh, variable. So next when we scroll down you can see that we have uh, anxiety that's regressed onto burnout, negative coping, extraversion, and the interaction between burnout and extraversion. So the INT underscore one is the interaction term and you'll see down here it's got a little product terms key just highlighting its burnout by extraversion right here. So in looking at this we see uh, in terms of the effect of burnout on anxiety you'll see that we have a regression slope of 0.1989 and we see that we have statistical significance. But keep in mind that because we have this moderator in here, uh, the regression slope is reflecting the predictive relationship between burnout and anxiety when extraversion is zero. Okay, and because we had mean centered the extraversion variable, that regression slope is, is uh, equal to um, the predictive relationship or the slope for the relationship uh, between burnout and uh, anxiety uh, at the mean on the extraversion variable. So we have we see that that is statistically significant. We see our uh, negative coping uh, predictor right here. This is the mediator. We see that that is statistically significant in the model. So there's a positive and significant predictive relationship. We have extraversion right here that um, even though it's positive, it's not statistically significant over here. And because we're using uh, burnout and extraversion in that interaction term, then that slope uh, would be interpreted as the predictive relationship between extraversion and anxiety at the mean on the burnout variable because again, the, both burnout and extraversion were mean centered. Uh, then we have the interaction term right here. It's 0 0.1001 and we see it's statistically significant. So what this is telling us right here is that the uh, regression slope uh, uh, from burnout to anxiety is actually being moderated by our extraversion variable. So in other words, the slope for the relationship between burnout and anxiety changes across levels of extraversion. Or if we go back to the path diagram, we can say then that our C prime 
path is being moderated by extroversion. So now let's scroll down a little bit further and the next section in our output contains information that can be useful for probing um, the interaction. So you'll see that we have this table right here of conditional effects of the focal predictor at values of the moderator. And this is where um, we had uh, made those selections in terms of one standard deviation below the mean, at the mean, and above the mean on um, the moderating variable. So you'll notice right here that um, what we have is uh, extraversion. This is one, one standard deviation below the mean on the extraversion centered variable. This is at the mean on the centered variable and the mean of a centered variable is zero. And then we have above the mean on the centered uh, predictor variable. So these are the regression slopes for the effect of burnout on anxiety at those three levels of the extraversion variable. So you can see it's pos uh, 0 0.1697, 0 0.1989, and 0 0.2280. And you can see that there's, uh, it appears that the slope is becoming increasingly positive as we move from lower levels of ex, uh, extroversion to higher levels on extroversion. And all three of those uh, simple slopes are statistically significant. Next, when we scroll down, you'll see that we have data for visualizing uh, the conditional effects. So instead of just testing out um, effects, we can also plot out uh, the simple slopes in order to better study the nature of the interaction. So the way that we can do that using uh, this code that's been generated is that we can double click inside our, um, our output and what we'll do at this point is we will highlight all of this information right here all the way through the period and including the period. I'm going to copy this and next I'm going to open up a new syntax file. So I'll go to File, New and then go to syntax. I'll paste this in and then highlight it all and when I click the green button you'll see that I get uh, what looks to be a plotting of, of, of uh, points and it looks like simple slopes. And you can, you can pretty much visualize what's going on. Um, I personally prefer uh, to go a little bit further and to generate lines. Uh, for instance, if I want to um, include this in a manuscript or something, then I can go, uh, basically what that syntax has done is it's generated a new uh, SPSS file and from this file you can plot out the simple slopes. So this is it right here. You just, ha you, you just have to make sure to kind of look for it. And um, I'll go under Graphs, Legacy Dialogues, go down to uh, the uh, line chart right here. So I'll click on Line, click on Multiple, and then Define. And then what I'll do is move the, um, I'll click on other statistic right here. Our dependent variable is the anxiety variable, so I'm going to move it to this box. And then I'm going to move burn or burnout to the category axis. That's for my um, X uh, axis. And then we're going to uh, add in extraversion. It says define lines by. We'll click on OK. And so now you can see that we have a plot of the simple slopes for the relationship between burnout and anxiety. And as you're looking at this, you can see that the blue line, that's the, the, uh, the um, regression line or, or a slope um, at uh, one standard deviation below the mean on extraversion. You can see that um, the line, the red line is reflecting one standard deviation above the mean on extraversion and the green line is reflecting at the mean. And as we had noted before, just looking at that table of conditional effects, you can see that um, the, um, the slope appears to be increasing as we move from low levels of extraversion to higher levels of extraversion. So it appears then that people who were um, low, uh, low on extraversion, at least defined by one standard deviation below uh, the mean on that variable, the slope was less pronounced, less positively pronounced than uh, the slopes uh, at the mean or at one standard deviation above the mean on extraversion. Okay, so now going back into our output, we'll look at uh, the next table, which is going to contain information regarding the indirect effect, um, or the next portion of the, this uh, area, which is going to contain the table related to the indirect effect. So specifically, uh, right here, it says indirect effect of X on Y. So remember that the indirect effect is computed as a product of path A and path B. So if I go back up to my, uh, my regression models, you know, basically this right here, this is the slope for path A, 
and, uh, which is the uh, path from burnout to negative coping, and then path B, uh, that, that particular slope is this 0.2441 from negative coping to anxiety. So we have then this computed effect right here, which again is a product of those two paths, and then the way that we test that uh, in, in process is to generate bootstrap confidence intervals around our indirect effect. So remember that we took 5,000 bootstrap samples and we have a, a percentile confidence interval that's generated. So you'll notice that we have the lower, uh, the lower bound and the upper bound of that confidence interval right here. So to test that indirect effect for statistical significance, what we're going to do is to um, determine if zero, which is the null, uh, the null effect, if zero falls within the lower and upper bound or does it fall outside. So if zero falls between the lower and the upper bound then we would infer then that the indirect effect or the population indirect effect is equal to zero. So we would not be rejecting the null hypothesis that the um, that the population effect is non uh, that the population effect is zero. If zero falls outside of the lower and the upper bound, then we would reject the null and infer that the population indirect effect is significantly different from zero. So in this case, you can see that the null of zero. Uh, does not fall between the lower and the upper bound. It clearly falls outside of, of that particular confidence interval. So we would reject the null hypothesis and infer that the population indirect effect is, um, is not equal to zero. Okay, so uh, just a little bit more detail from the output. You can see down at the bottom you have analysis error uh, notes and errors. These are just some more details related to the model. You'll see that it does it notes that um, that uh, you know our confidence level, the 95% confidence intervals that are formed, the number of bootstrapping. It tells you which uh, variables were mean centered. It says right here extroversion and burnout again were uh, mean centered. So. That's basically all there is to it in terms of interpreting, running and interpreting um, results associated with Model 5 uh, using process. So again, I do want to encourage you to uh, visit the PowerPoint that is linked up underneath the video description. And I appreciate you watching.